Hello everyone, happy to see you here, welcome back to my channel. Hi, I'm Semantics. Today we have a really interesting equation, x to the fourth power plus 4 equal to 0. And one student wrote this type of comment under my post about this question. So as you can see, a lot of students have a lot of difficulties with this with this type of question. So right now let's try to figure out, let's try to look at it, how can we solve this correctly and step by step. You can also pause the video and write a solution down into the comment section and then we will check our answers. So first of all, according to the fundamental theorem of algebra, we will have four roots, like complex roots and real roots, okay? So it's really important important step right now. Okay, right now I'm going to show you a really great trick. Just look at it. So first of all, I'm going to rewrite this expression. So we have right here x to the fourth power plus 4. And right now I'm going to add to this expression 4x square. Okay, I'm going to add it 4x square. And we're going to subtract it. So minus 4x square. Basically, it changed nothing. So this expression equal to equal to 0. So as a result, we will have absolutely the same expression as in the beginning. But right now, let's group. Let's group this 4x square with this expression and leave this minus 4x square in the end. Let's do this right now. So as a result, what we will have? We will have x to the fourth power. Okay, x to the fourth power. The next thing we're going to write this one plus 4x square. Okay, so plus 4x square. The next thing we're going to write 4 plus 4. And the last we have minus 4x square. So minus 4x square equal to zero. Right now we have all the time root here addition. So right now let's group it. So let's group this expression right here. Okay, and if you look closely, this is our basic school formula. We have x squared plus 2 squared. Okay, so as a result, this expression is equal to x squared plus 2. And we're going to raise this to the second power. If you don't trust me, you can easily raise this to the second power according to the basic basic school identity. And we have right here minus, but instead of this 4x squared, let's write this thing. Let's write 2x to the second power. Okay, because according to a school property, we will have 4 x square. So this is absolutely the same thing. And right now let's consider it as a difference of squares. We can easily do this. We can easily do this because we have right here, for example, this is our uh, this is our a, this is our b, and we are talking about a square minus b square. According to the mm, school knowledge, we have a square minus b square. We can easily write it according to a, a school identity. We have, for example, a plus b in the beginning, and we have a minus b. Okay, really great. Right now, let's do this. Let's do this thing right here. So, as a result, in first parenthesis, we have x square, x square plus 2 and plus 2x. Okay, plus 2x. And in the second parenthesis, we have x square, x square plus 2 and minus 2x. Okay, equal to 0. So, as you can see, we factor our question. We have a product of two parentheses. And a product of two parentheses equal to 0 when the first parenthesis is equal to 0 or the second parenthesis is equal to 0. So, let's start, for example, let's consider these first parentheses. So, we are talking about x square plus 2x, okay, plus 2x and plus 2. I just change places right here. So, plus 2 equal to equal to 0. Let's split it by two parts because we will have like the second quadratic equation and then we will find more roots right here. So, x squared plus 2x plus 2 equal to 0. This is basic school quadratic equation. We're gonna we're gonna talk about, about discriminant and about x, x first and x second. Let's do the thing right now. So, according to a school knowledge, we have x first and second equal to we have minus b plus minus square root of discriminant and all over, all over to a. Let's plug in each of these elements into this spot. From here, a equal to 1, yeah, a equal to 1, b equal to, we have right here, we have 2, and c equal to, c equal to 2. Let's plug in each of these elements into these spots. So we have x first and second equal to, we have right here minus 2 minus b, yeah, we have minus 2 plus minus discriminant, this is our b square minus 4ac. So we have b square 2 square minus 4 times 1 and times and times 2. And we divide all of the thing by 2a, but 2a equal to 1, so we have 2 times 1. Let's simplify this a little bit, okay? So we have right here x first and second equal to, okay, we have minus 2, minus 2 plus minus. Right here we have 4 minus 8, which is equal to minus 4, okay? So we have square root of minus 4, and we divide all of the thing by by 2. And a lot of students confused about it because we have right here square root of minus 4, so it's we are not talking about real numbers, we are talking about complex numbers, because in terms of real numbers, square root cannot be like find in, in terms of negative negative values, so we're talking about complex numbers, but doesn't matter, as I told before, according to a fundamental theorem of algebra, we will have four roots, like real numbers or complex number, doesn't matter, we, we need to find all of this, so right now let's, let's find it. First of all, let's simplify a little bit our square root of minus 4, not like 
simplify, let's express it in another way. So we have x first and second equal to, we have minus 2, and let's split it. Okay, let's write it as square root of 4 times square root of, of minus 1 and divide all of the thing by 2. And square root of minus 1, this is our complex, like, imaginary unit. This is equal to, this is equal to i. So as a result, x first and x second, x first and second equal to, we have minus 2 plus minus, square root of 4 equal to 2, we have right here i, and we divide by, by 2. Right now, the final tricky move right here, we will have, like, a great and, uh, like, perfect answer. So x first and second equal to, we have right here minus 1, plus minus plus minus i minus one plus minus i and these are our two complex roots we have right here i doesn't matter we have complex root let's let's try to find this let's try to solve this equation let's try to solve this one so we have right here x square minus 2x and plus 2 equal to equal to 0 right now let's find according to the according to the same uh, algorithm let's find this x third and x fourth according to this same formula. We have right here minus b, we have not minus 2, but 2 plus minus square root of discriminant. We have right here minus 2 square minus 4 times 1 times 2 minus 4 times 1 times 2. And we divide all of this expression by 2 times 1. So the same thing. Right now we have x third and fourth, third and fourth equal to, we have right here 2 plus minus square root of, it will be like the same thing as before because we are talking about the same discriminant. One difference is this minus, but it like doesn't matter right here because we have square. So as a result, we'll have absolutely the same discriminant, square root of minus 4. And we divide all of this by, by 2. Really great. X third and fourth, x third and fourth equal to, we have right here 2 plus minus, the same algorithm as before, we have square root of 4 times square root of minus 1, and as a result we divide it by 2. So x third and fourth equal to 2 plus minus 2i, and we divide all of this by 2. So the last thing, we divide both parts, numerator and denominator, by 2. So our x third and fourth equal to 1 plus minus 1 plus minus i 1 plus minus i and a lot of students ask me about uh, the amount of roots right here and then i add uh, then i answer them okay in the beginning we had x to the fourth power so according to a fundamental theorem of algebra so let's just rewrite this question so in the beginning we had we had x to the fourth plus 4 equal to 0, okay? We have the, the, the maximum power, so we have right here fourth power. It took its uh, us about uh, the amount of roots, because according to a fundamental theorem of algebra, for example, imagine we have like uh, x third, we are talking about three roots, okay? Three roots, at least, yeah? Three, three roots. We don't know how many like complex roots, how many real number roots, but we are talking about three roots. So this is like a maximum amount of roots. And in the same way, we have x to the fourth power, so we are talking about four roots, like a real number, complex number, doesn't matter, but but four roots. Some root on, uh, on a complex plane, some roots on a real number plane, so this is a fundamental theorem of algebra. Right now, let, let's write our final answer. Let's write our final answer to this question. So I hope you understand it, that we find like, uh, like our maximum of roots. So x first and second, x first, let's write x first equal to minus one plus i, x second equal to minus one minus i, x third equal to uh, 1 plus i, and x fourth equal to 1 minus i. Really great. So this is our final answer. This is all of the all, all roots right here. We don't find like one of these. We find all four roots. And it happens right here that we found our um, complex solution. So it doesn't matter. This is mess. We, we there are a lot of questions with with five complex roots. With none of none of these are real roots. Yeah, it happens sometimes. So in our case, we have four real number roots. Right now, I'm going to show you a graph to this question. So according to real number roots, according to a complex plane. So right now, you can easily you can easily see these screenshots from internet libraries. So as you can see, we find we solve it absolutely, absolutely correctly. A great question. I hope you learned something new. I hope you remember something new. This is like mm, I'm going to say that this is a very tricky question because right here I made a really great trick. I'm going to write the thing which, which is equal to zero and right now I group it, okay? Uh, I group it, uh, group these elements with uh, with this part and this will leave it like that on the right side. So in, in this step, so this is like a first trick right here, okay? First trick 
And this is like a second trick. This is not like a trick. This is like basic school identity, difference of difference of squares. So I hope you I hope you understand it. Great question. Write the thoughts about it. Let's exchange information. Write a note about this question. Let's let's discuss a little bit about this type of question. So I am really excited to read your comments, to read your notes about this question, and let's exchange information. This is also really great when people all over the world exchange information. This is really great. Maybe a lot, a lot of students watch my channel. A lot of a lot of uh, teachers watch my channel, so I really appreciate it. Thank you everyone for subscribing to my channel. We have like more than 70k subscribers, so I really appreciate it that you watch my channel. I, I try to improve my content, I try to find really interesting questions every day, so I'm really excited. And thank you everyone, wish you all the best in your life, see you in the next videos, and have a great day.